pray for the hearers that their hearts will be softened to the word of God. Praise the Lord Jesus. San Clemente, Psalm says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for his goodness. Praise the Lord. His mercy endureth forever. Praise his holy name that he gave his only begotten son down to earth that whosoever shall believe in him shall have everlasting life. God did not send his son to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Condemnation is when you don't believe that Jesus is the son of God. And then it goes on to say, this is the verdict that men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil and they didn't want to bring their deeds to the light lest they be reproved or exposed. But we do our work that they're in the light, that they're wrought of God. John 3, 16 to 21 is the full counsel of God's word. You have to believe on the son that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. He is the light of the world in John chapter one in Colossians. Everything is made by him and through him. Nothing was made without him that was made. Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one. Praise God. In Revelation, it says Jesus. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So testifying of Jesus Proclaiming the gospel, telling you what Jesus preached is, is power. It's the power to save your soul. And we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, as it is the power of God to save men's souls, first to the Jews and then to the Greeks. Praise the Lord Jesus. Jesus sends us out. Jesus said in Mark 16, I send you out to preach to every creature, preaching to the kids, the parents, the adults, preaching that Jesus died for your sins and rose again on the third day. And there is no other name given under heaven which men can be saved by, but by the man, Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus. He's fully God and fully man. He was born of a virgin in Isaiah 7, 14. All the prophecies point to him. Isaiah, 700 years before Christ, tells you that he's going to be born of a virgin. Psalm 22. A thousand years before Christ tells you that not one bone would be broken and that they would cast lots for his clothes. Praise God. When they, when they were crucified, Jesus was the exception. Everybody else had a bone broken. So the Bible tells you what's going to happen before it happens. And all the scriptures point to Jesus. In Hebrews, he says, lo, the volume of the book is written about me. So all the scripture points to Jesus. In 1 Peter 1, it says the spirit of Christ was in the prophets, prophesying of things to come that they didn't even understand. And now in the fullness of the times, it says in Hebrews that we have this great cloud of witnesses and that we see all the proof that Jesus is the son of God, that he died for our sins. It is 2023 after the death of Jesus. So the problem is, is people are, are still walking in darkness rather than the light and people that are born again no longer walk in darkness the Bible says in Romans 6 that we are baptized into Christ's death and we are raised into his resurrection it says shall we go on sinning that grace may abound and Paul says God forbid is Jesus the minister of sin no so as a born-again believer we have the, a testimony of the power of God I've been delivered from darkness to light. I've been delivered from the power of Satan to the power of God through Jesus Christ for the remission of sins to those who will be sanctified unto inheritance. That's Acts 26, 18. And it's another way of giving the gospel that you must turn from the darkness and turn from Satan and you turn to God and you believe on Christ. And Christ said to preach his words in Luke 14. He said, count the cost to be his disciple. And he shows you that it's a spiritual war to the end. Christ didn't preach, uh, just say a prayer 
and it's once saved, always saved. Christ told us all the scriptures that, that he would abide in us all the way to the end and that we would bear fruit that would remain, he says. In John 8, 31, he tells us, Christ tells us, if you abide in his word, then you are his disciples indeed. You got to abide in his word. You got to eat his word. You got to meditate on his word. In Psalms, it says, I meditate on your statutes. I eat your word. I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And so Psalm, the Psalms 119, your word is like a lamp under my feet. Praise God. He is the high tower. He is the high priest. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the firstborn of the dead. He is the faithful and true. He is the great, amen. He is the word of God, the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. If anybody's suffering with afflictions, depression, suicidal thoughts, addictions, um, any of these things, Jesus can deliver you from that. Jesus can set you free from that. The world is a bondage to you. Jesus said, come to me, all who are heavy laden and weary. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come and taste and see that he is good, says the word of God. And that he gives you living waters. Living waters that you will not run dry. This world will run you dry. All their pills, all their psychologies, all their programs, all of this other stuff will not give you the joy of the Lord. You need to be baptized in the spirit of God. You need to be born again of the almighty God. In John 3, 3, Jesus said, Verily, verily, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And you, you have to be born of the water and of the spirit. It is not of the will of man, it says. It is the spirit of God. The wind blows and nobody knows where it comes from. So is it with those who are born of God. The spirit bears witness in us. In 1 John, it says, God is light. And in him is no darkness. If we say we know him and we walk in darkness, we lie and we do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus cleanses us of all unrighteousness. And we have fellowship one with another. It's very clear there that we can't walk in darkness. We have to walk in the light as he is in the light. In 1 Peter 4, it says, as Christ suffered in the flesh, we also must suffer in the flesh that we would cease from sin. So Jesus never sinned. Jesus went to the cross for you and for me. It says his, his blood can atone for everybody, the sins of the whole world, John says. But you have to believe. You have to be humbled under the mighty hand of God that in due time he may exalt you. It says, let the wicked man forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will abundantly pardon you. Though your sins be like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. That's what the Lord is going to do. He's going to give you a new heart. He says, come to me and get a new heart to replace that heart of stone. He will give you a heart of flesh. And in Isaiah, we see that Isaiah was taken up to the throne of God 700 years beforehand and he sees the angels saying holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty high and lifted up praise God and Isaiah was undone when he saw the glory of God he was undone and it's a picture of being humbled under the mighty hand of God in the glory of God and he said, I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips. And what I hear and what I speak is like rubbish. So compared to the holiness of God, all the world's uh, noise that is outside of God's word and praise of God is like rubbish. It is what's going to uh, bring you to uh, being tired all the time, having no joy having a depression, having anxiety, needing to take a pill, needing to smoke, needing to drink, needing the approval of men. And all of that is going to wear you out. And that's why Jesus said, come to me all who are heavy laden and weary, 
His yoke is easy and His burden is light. His commandments are not burdensome. Following Jesus is so much better than following the world. It is pure, it is clean. He gave us this world. He gave us, he gave us the chance to praise Him. And it says that uh, the angels long to look and see who will get salvation. They, they're watching. It's an angelic war. You hear a lot of the wicked music glorifying highway to hell and glorifying demonic things. And you see the world is teaching kids that they might not be male and female. You see that they're giving them a chemical a change of, 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 of their gender. They're programming them to be against God. And this is the last days where we can see that evil is called good and good is called evil. Where they're turning dark for light and light for dark and bitter for sweet in Isaiah 5.10. And Isaiah goes on in chapter 53 to tell you how Jesus would go to the cross 700 years beforehand. That he would be marred beyond human recognition. That he would be beaten for our iniquities. That the transgression of our sin would be laid upon him. That the chastisement of our peace would be upon him. And it's showing you a picture of him beat up. And you see when Jesus went to the cross, they covered his face. And they punched him in the face. And they whipped his back. And they nailed him to the cross. They nailed God in the flesh to the cross. And Jesus said that his kingdom is not of this world. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And so that's what we come to tell you, that if you're against God, we know that it's a spiritual war and you don't know what you're doing. We know that you're lost without God. We know that you're just walking like a blind man without God. But with Jesus, he is the light unto all men. And you got to believe the gospel and you got to abide in his word, as I was saying in John 8, 31. These are my disciples indeed. These who abide in my word are my disciples indeed. And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The slave will not abide in the house of the Lord forever. Whoever is a servant of sin is a slave of sin. But whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Praise God. He is mighty to be praised. And Jesus warned about the last days where he told us it'd be like it is today. The quickest way to see that we're in end times is to see the things I've already said. The doctrines of demons being perpetrated on the kids. Jesus said it would be like the days of Lot, which is like in Sodom, Gomorrah, and as the days of Noah, where men were eating and drinking and weren't hearing Noah, the preacher of righteousness, warning, get into the ark, the judgment's coming. And Jesus said the people are going to be the same way. They're not going to be ready for the judgment to come. And Jesus said when his gospel's preached to the ends of the earth, then the end will come, his return. In Matthew 24, 13, and he said that men's hearts are going to grow cold because lawlessness is going to increase. Sin is going to abound, multiply. The multiplication of wickedness goes forth. And Jesus said that there would be many false prophets and false Christs and that there would be wars, famines, pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. The earth is shaking right now all over the world. The earthquakes are increasing. The weather's changing. And it's not what the world wants to tell you about global warming and all of this. It is prophesied that God is going to shake everything. In Hebrews 12, everything is going to be shaken. And what remains on the rock of Jesus will remain. And everything of the world is going to fall away. Praise God. Praise His holy name. And Jesus said, His gospel is believe. Repent and believe. In Luke 13, he said, Nay, unless ye repent, ye will all likewise perish. And he was talking to his own disciples. They had to turn and give their life to Christ and follow him. And Jesus is so long suffering. And the Bible says God is not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. Repentance is turning from the, your, the world that you're in of sin and giving your heart to 
God and being baptized in Jesus' name. In Acts 2.38, he says, Men, men, what we must we do to be saved? Repent and believe the gospel and be baptized for the remission of sins and ye will receive the Holy Ghost, the gift of the Holy Ghost. And so when you turn from your sin and you believe in childlike faith that, that Jesus died for your sins and now you must follow him, then you're going to be born again. The, the Spirit will move on you at that time. And you'll be born again. And then you have to be obedient. In Acts 5, 32, as they're street preaching, just like we're doing, but they were preaching under the duress of being beaten, thrown in jail, and persecuted. Every single apostle, a disciple of Jesus that walked with him, except for John, was crucified, cut in half, James was thrown off of a hill. They, they were killed for this message that Jesus said he is the only way. He is the only truth to get to God. And he is the only way to eternal life. That disqualifies Allah of, of the Muslim Quran. That disqualifies um, all the other religions. All the other pagan religions. The Hindu gods, they have thousands of gods. God bless you. God bless you. And God said, Jesus said in Matthew 18, unless you are converted like a little child, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. And then he tells you that whoever's leaning toward him, if you harm one of the little ones leaning toward him, it would be better for you to have a millstone around your neck and thrown into the depths of the sea, showing you a picture of what's going to happen to those who come against born again believers and teach them falsely teach them against God's word and Jesus said offenses must come in the world but woe to him who causes the offenses and he shows you that little one and, and he says woe to those who cause the least of these leaning toward me to be to stumble stumble against God to turn away from the word of God and then Jesus shows you how serious it is about sin he says, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your foot causes you to sin, chop it off. Better for you to enter life blind, maimed, and crippled than go into hellfire in Matthew 18. Praise the Lord. There are many false prophets in these last days saying they're hearing from God, but speaking against the very word of God. Praise the Lord. There is power in the name of Jesus. Resurrection power in the name of Jesus. To deliver from alcohol. To deliver from drugs. Praise the Lord. Yes, praise God. Yes, God wants us to testify of his power. That I was once a former blasphemer. I was once a former drug trafficker. I used to be addicted. And God took all of that and gave me a new heart. And put his spirit in me. And I started obeying and I felt the joy of the Lord. And that's what a born again believer will have a testimony of that they've been delivered from this world. The Bible says friendship with the world is enmity against God and James. So you got to be separate from this world, this world system, the drugs, the fornication, the alcohol, drunkenness. The Bible warns about all this. Praise God. And, it, and we hear in 1 Corinthians 6, Be not deceived. Do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? And then he goes through the list to show us. Don't be deceived. These things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Neither drunkard, neither fornicator, neither idolater, neither covetous, neither homosexual, neither sodomite, neither reviler, neither extortioner, these will not inherit the kingdom of God. And these are only some of the flesh sins. In Galatians 5 and 6, we see pharmakia, drugs attached to it. Mind or mood altering drugs are, are a form of sorcery. What it's saying is that, God, you didn't create me good enough. And that I must take drugs into my vessel. And Jesus said, be holy as he is holy. Jesus said to the woman at the well, I have water that you need to ask for you will never thirst and she said give me this water 
our father Jacob had to keep going to this well. Are you greater than him? Praise God. So the woman at the well, she she got she met Jesus and he said he had living water. And she said, no, well, Jacob, who, who created this, who dug this well, you know, are you greater than Jacob? And he talks about how the children of God worship in spirit of truth and that they didn't know who they worshiped. And she said that we are waiting for the Messiah to come. And he tells her all about herself. He tells her, woman, get your husband. And she says, I have none. And he says, you've spoken well. You've had five husbands, and the one you're with is not your husband. And she said, sir, I perceive you to be a prophet. And he told her that he is the Messiah. And she ran to Samaria, proclaiming Jesus Christ to the Samaritans to hear about a man who told me everything about me, and he's the Messiah. They came to see for themselves. The story, if you look at the history, that woman ended up being a martyr under Nero. She never stopped preaching Jesus. And she had many husbands, so people probably had a hard time receiving her testimony, possibly. Praise God that he uses the broken to confound the wise. It says in 1 Corinthians 1, rarely does God use the wisdom of this world. Nay, God does not use the wisdom. He uses this is the foolish things to confound the wise, the base things to, to tear apart those that are created by man. Praise God that he uses the preaching, it says. It says the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to we who are being saved, it's the power of God. In 1 Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians, it says the preaching of the cross to them who are dying without Christ is from death to death. But for we who believe, it's life to life. And, and the, glory is the glory of God, he reveals himself to you more and more as you abide in his word and you become obedient. In Hebrews chapter 5, we see that Paul is rebuking that these people should be teachers, but they still don't know the word of God. They don't know the deeper things. And they should be teachers by now. And he's telling them, that Jesus became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. And if you're obedient, you're going to eat the word of God and you're going to see the deeper things. And then you're going to know the difference between darkness and light from profane and holy, from evil and good. You're going to see it in more depth, more understanding. You're going to mourn for fallen earth. You're going to be mourning for, for the church that's falling away. You're going to see it. You're going to, you're going to understand the parables. Jesus said, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God in John 3, 3. In Matthew 13, he goes on to say, the parables have been given to you, the disciples, to understand. But to the world that's not a believer, unbelievers will not understand the kingdom of God. It's foolishness to them until they're born again. And then they're going to understand this scripture that I'm going to give you from the Lord Jesus. Praise God. In Matthew 13, we're called to preach his word. Jesus is the seed that we sow into the hearts of men that it may save your soul, that it will go into your heart and produce a harvest. And so the preaching of the cross is, is sowing seed out into the whole world. And now you're going to understand that Jesus didn't preach once saved, always saved, because he said, some hear the word. And it's on, it's on ground where they don't receive it. And the bird comes and he takes it away. And that bird is a picture of Satan, always trying to snatch the word of God. Always trying to throw in a lie. And the second hearer hears the word in Matthew 13, 21. But it's not, it's on rocky ground. And, and he believes, he believes. But the, cares, but, the, but the world chokes it out. It says they believe. But as soon as tribulation and persecution come for the word, which is Jesus Christ, they become offended and fall away, one version says. So you can believe, go to church, raise holy hands, 
believe, get baptized. But when it comes time to do the will of the Father and stand for the Lord Jesus Christ on the street corners, in front of the abortion clinic, standing for righteousness, to standing for what the Word of God says, if you're not willing to do that, you become offended. This message is for you in Matthew 13, 21. In Matthew 13, 22, you can hear the word, make it a little further. But the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches can choke it out and you'll have no fruit. That's what the Bible says. Only one hearer hears and understands and, and uh, has fruit 160 and 30 fold in Matthew 13. And then he goes on to say that the tares are the lies from the evil one, the devil, that are sown into this world and some of these churches that are teaching against God, teaching against the very Bible, the very holy scriptures. And they're saying that you can keep sinning. And the Bible says very clearly in 1 John, he who goes on sinning is of his father, the devil. You cannot continue to go on sinning. Praise our God. Praise our God. And so there's a lot of tares that are sown in. That would be false prophets, false prophesying, the one world religion, Islam, the Pope's trying to join all the religions together, telling you not to preach. It's just teaching exactly against Jesus. You see other, other people on microphones that are mega churches telling you that, you know, that we all serve the same God, Allah, which is the, uh, which is Muslim religion that says there is no begotten son. It's biblically antichrist. Yet you see their, their adultery in the churches. You see all these things. And Jesus is showing you that you will know them by their fruits. Jesus said in Matthew 7, narrow is the way. And straight is the gate, and few there be that find it. But broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many go therewith. And he says, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing. So they come to you with a little bit of the word of God. They come to you in sheep's clothing. But you will know them by their fruits. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. So he says, wherever your heart is, there your treasure is. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, and by their fruits you will know them. And then he goes on to say in Matthew 7, 21 through 23, praise God, that many are going to say in that day, Lord, Lord. And to this group, Jesus says they weren't doing the will of the Father. But it's showing you a picture of a judgment where many people think they're going to be saved. And they're going to argue with them. But Lord, we cast out devils. We did many wonderful works in your name. And he's going to say to this group, depart from me, ye that work sin, lawlessness, iniquity. And we know that they weren't trying to justify themselves by their works to be saved based on what Jesus says right after that. We know that they were uh, workers of sin is what it says very clearly. And right after that, Jesus says, I will tell you the wise man and liken him to he that built on the rock, which is Jesus Christ. And when the storm came and the wind blew and the, and the waves crashed, it withstood the storm and, and was founded on that rock. So that's telling you about a person who does what God said. They're actually doing the will of the Father. And then he says, I will liken unto the foolish man, the one who hears the word and doesn't do. And he is like unto a man who built his house on the sand. And when the wind came and the storm blew and the, and the waters rushed in, great was its fall. So that ought to tell you right there that you've got to follow Jesus in spirit and truth. You cannot continue to practice sin. And the Bible says, why do you call me Lord and not do what I've commanded? In 1 John 1, 2, 3, and 4. And it says that the devil has been sinning from the beginning. And for this reason, Jesus Christ was made manifest that he might defeat the works of the devil. Be not deceived, John says, little children. Those who practice righteousness are righteous even as he is righteous. But those who go on practicing sin are of your father, the devil. And by this, we are manifest. Who are the children of God and the children of the devil? So when people give you a false gospel that we're all children of God, that is contradicting those scriptures right there. That there are children of the devil who are re rejecting what Jesus did at the cross. There are false prophets who come in and speak against God or say things presumptuously that God told him so and so that that Trump would be elected. Many of the NAR false prophets came saying, oh, I've heard from the Lord. Trump is going to be in office. Trump is going to be in office. And they blasphemed the name of God by lowering his name. 
and they were speaking out of their vanity of their own heart. And that's what Jesus said it was going to be like. Many false prophets and false Christs. In Matthew 24, and he goes on in the parables to show you who were of God and who were not of God. And he shows you in Matthew 13 what I just showed you, the parable of the sower, the parable of the tares. And he says in Matthew 13, 41 through 43, Lo, at the end of the age, the holy angels will come out and, and reap out of God's kingdom all who offend and those who practice sin. So we don't want to offend the little ones leaning toward God. God, with any false teaching, with any crazy over-the-top demonic teaching, and with any subtle false teaching. We want to lift up the little ones. And Jesus said in Matthew 18, you want to be great in the kingdom of God? Lift up the little ones. He said you must be converted like a child and lift each other up. That's another thing that we see in the last days. A lot of people have a zeal for the Lord. A lot of people are on fire for the Lord. But we're in, in some ways being abusive to each other and beating each other up instead of, you know, being patient, long suffering, not not uh, listening to false teaching. No, 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 not, not listening to false teaching, rebuking the false te teaching by the scriptures, but doing it in love, in meekness, in long suffering. Praise our God. Jesus said, do not throw what is precious out to pigs and swine lest they trample you under it showing you at a, at a certain time if somebody isn't receiving correction receiving the word of God then you have to leave them you plant the seed of truth you say go to the scriptures and, and you pray that they will heed the word of God that God will water it and that's what it says in Corinthians it says some some water some some uh, some plant some water but it's always God that gives the increase so God gives the increase. That way man glories in nothing. We lift up Jesus that he may be exalted and we, be, we may be uh, low. We may be low and humble that he may be exalted. And Jesus goes on to tell you about the last day's parables. In Matthew 24, he shows you a picture of two servants. And he says, one grows an evil heart and beats the other servants with many stripes and is out with the drunken. Now the word drunken can mean being drunk on wine that it says in 1 Corinthians 6 does not inherit the kingdom of God. It can be being drunk on drugs. It can also mean worldly with the world, with the false prophets, with, with, uh, with just the world. So if you're more with the world than you are with the servants and you're beating God's true servants, this parable needs to meditate. You need to meditate on this parable because Jesus says if you're beating God's true servants, that when he returns, he's going to cut those people off and appoint them with the hypocrites where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. And then he goes on to Matthew 25 and gives you the parable of the talents. And one of the, one of the guys who had talents, which is gifts, he didn't do anything with what God gave him. He buried his talent. And he, he said that God is an austere man, reaping where he doesn't, where he, harvesting where he doesn't uh, sow. And so he's really speaking against God. And God is angry at this. And he, he cuts him off too. And he says, give what he had to the others. Because more is given to those who are obedient, the Bible says. And then we see a parable again of ten virgins. And we know he's talking about the church in these parables. And this is the parable of the ten virgins. And ten are likened unto wise virgins. And five are likened unto the foolish. And the wise have their oil and they're ready for Jesus to return, meaning that they're buying from the Lord Jesus. They're still fellowshipping with the saints. They're still reading the Word of God, praise God. They're still doing the will of the Father. They're, they're making sure they're calling an election. They're ready for the Lord. Their eyes are open to the Lord. They're hungry and, hungering and thirsting for righteousness. They want souls to be saved. Their heart is remaining soft. They're, they're preaching in season and out of season. They're ready. They, they see the times, and they're ready for the Lord Jesus. And those are the wise virgins. They're ready. The foolish ones don't have any oil. And when the master returns, they say, give us some oil that we may have our lamps lit. And they said, no, go buy your own. And while they were going to buy their own, Jesus returned. And then they ran to the door, and they knocked. And they said, Lord, let us in. And Jesus said, I don't know you. So it's a picture of not being ready when Jesus returns. And he's showing you a church and showing you a division between the true and the false. The true word of God and the lies that are sown in. The doers of the word and those who are only hearers only. 
the ones that are practicing sin and the ones who are practicing righteousness. And in Matthew 25, we see that the sheep and the goats are lined up together, one on his right, one on his left. And he says to the ones that were doing the will of God, enter the joy of the Lord. Good and well done, my faithful servant. When I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was in prison, you came to visit me. When I was naked, you gave me clothing. And they said, when did we do that? And he says to the least of these, you did it unto me. And then he says to the goats, depart into everlasting fire created for the devil and his angels. So hell was created for the devil and his angels in Matthew 25. But in Isaiah, it says that hell enlarges its mouth every day. This is the reality of the gospel. It's sweet to the mouth when you eat it, says the prophet Jeremiah, says the prophet Ezekiel, says the prophet John in the book of Revelation. But it is bitter to the belly. There is a judgment coming. And it's, it's a weeping, it's a time of weeping for those who are not of Christ. That's everlasting shame and contempt. In Daniel 12, it says some will rise to everlasting shame and contempt. But others will rise and shine like the stars who lead many to righteousness. So the Bible says the wise win souls in Proverbs. In Jude, it says on some have compassion, making a difference. But on others, save with fear, hating even the garment stained with the sulfur. So there's two different methods. Giving people the grace of God and the love of Jesus and that he, that he went to the cross for you and that he loves you so much and he's so long suffering and forbearing, knowing the kindness of the Lord leads men to repentance, it says. But also it's this, my friends, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, says the Holy Scriptures. So we've got to have both sides, the goodness of God and the wrath of God. That Jesus came to die for your sins, but that he's also coming back as a conquering king to judge in righteousness. It says this in Acts, for God has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. And his name is Christ Jesus. And he proved to the whole world by raising him from the dead. And that's, that's coming the time, and this is the time we're in. Where we're in the last days, and we can see all these things coming upon us. We see the gospel's been preached. We see the last days remnant or out street preaching all over the world. With more fire. We see the great falling away church, mostly on TV, and the mega churches. Not all of them, but a lot of them are preaching an easy believism. That you can keep your sin. That you can continue to be a transgender and, and without giving you the fear of God, which is clean and everlasting and enduring. the fear of, By fear of God, men depart from evil, the Bible says. In 1 Peter 4, as, as I told you, it says in the beginning, as Christ suffered in the flesh, so we must suffer in the flesh that we would cease from sins. And then it tells you that in times past, we used to do the things of the world, the Gentiles, it says, but that just means not born again. We used to do these things, the, the banquetings, that's like partying, that's like Super Bowl Sunday, drinking, gambling, the banquetings, the revelries, the, the, the lasciviousness, meaning all the sexual stuff that's, that's outside of God's will for you. All of these things, revilings, all of these things, we used to do those, but now we don't, it says. And now those who, don't, who you used to practice those with, they look at you strange, it says. And he says that you're going through the persecutions that are, that are going to happen to all Christians. He says uh, that, you know, don't faint at the persecutions that as if you're the only one going through it. That all, must, all who live godly in Christ Jesus must suffer persecution. But let us not suffer for the world like we used to. As meddlers, as evil surmisers, as, false, as falsehood, living in falsehood. Let us suffer the reproach of Christ for the word of God. The Bible says, do not add to the word of God, lest ye be found a liar. So we don't want you to be found a liar. This is for the church. Don't you know that Jesus said that these people honor me with their lips? He's telling that to the religious people. They honor me with their lips. They give me lip service. 
That's what he says. These people honor me. They draw near to me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Teaching the doctrines and precepts of men. The Catholicism is the traditions of men. Mormonism, Jehovah's Witness. The thing that these cults have in common is pedophilia, sex outside of marriage, and they preach against God's word. Let's look at it this way. When you preach against God's word, you will have sin in your life. Right? If you abide in his word, he's going to set you free. But if you preach against his word, you're going to see bad fruit. As we're seeing in these last days, manifesting. Second Timothy 3 tells us that it will be manifest, these deeds. Praise God, you guys. Jesus died for you. He died for you. Be born again in the spirit of God. Fight the good fight of faith. Tell other people about him. Turn away from the darkness. Turn away from all the wicked music, the drugs, and proclaim the power of God. Praise our God. In John 15, we see more about abiding in Jesus. It says the Father draws all, and that he purges those who are on the vine, which is Christ Jesus, that we would bear more fruit. And then he says, if a branch bear no fruit, the Father takes it off and throws it into the fire. Remember, if you're not bearing fruit that lasts, that you can dry up and wither away and fall away from the kingdom of God and end up in the world, doing the things of the world, and staying in church and actually being what the Bible calls a tear, sown in with the wheat, sheep among goats. So in John 15, we see it very clearly that you must abide in him. Without, apart from Jesus, you can bear no fruit. And then he tells us that the Father purges all, that we would bear more fruit. And then he tells us the servant is not greater than him. They, will per they persecuted me, they will persecute you. And Jesus says he testifies to the whole world that its works are evil. So Jesus didn't come just preaching love, 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 no, no judgment. Jesus came and preached on judgment. In, in uh, Psalm 37 it said the righteous man his mouth speaketh on judgment. And that, that is how to get people to follow God and not, not trample on what Jesus did. It says in Hebrews, lest ye trample on the grace of God and put him to open shame, treating the blood of the covenant as if it's common. That's what a lot of lukewarm Christians do. They go back out to the world and they treat what Jesus did as common. And their mouth never changes. They continue to cuss. They continue to get drunk. And they say, I believe. And it really, what? And I used to be one. I used to be like that. And really what it is, is it's, it's a bad representation of Jesus. I at least, that I recall, would tell people, I'm not following Jesus, I believe, but I'm still, I'm still not following him right. Praise God. So you got to be humble and, and not speak against his word. In Hebrews it says, in Hebrews 12 it says, Do you despise the chastening of the Lord that all sons must endure? And if ye endure chastisement, as all sons must endure, meaning the purging, the correction, then ye are sons indeed. But if ye despise the chastening of the Lord, ye are bastards, meaning you're not of Christ. And the Bible shows you that over and over, that you must be of Christ. Christ must be in you. You must be a fragrance to God, that, that Christ really is in you, and you're walking for his kingdom, that you're walking down that narrow path. That you would understand these scriptures, that they wouldn't be foreign to you, that they would quicken you. In John 6, Jesus said his word is spirit and everlasting life. The word goes forth like a sword. And he's coming back with a sword in his mouth to judge. And in Hebrews 4.12, it says the word of God is quick and active, powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing soul and spirit bones and marrow, a discerner of the heart and intentions of the mind, intentions of the heart, the thoughts. He's reading our thoughts. That's why Paul says that we tear down every vain argument. We tear it down. Everything that would exalt itself against Christ. We take every thought into captivity unto the obedience of Jesus Christ. Amen, right? That's how we know. That's how we disciple. That's how we see. Wait, wait, wait. You're going somewhere profane. You're going somewhere secular. You're bringing in Spain psychologies. You're bringing in anything that's against Christ. And we can see it's going to bring a, a false spirit. 
Bible says, test the spirits. Not every spirit is of Christ, for there are many antichrists gone out into the world and many false prophets. Test the spirits of th that they be of Christ. In 2 John 1, it says that we must abide in the doctrine of Christ. We must continue in the doctrine of Christ, it says. And if a man does not abide in the doctrine of Christ, if he departs from the doctrine of Christ, do not let him into your house and, and wish him Godspeed. So that would mean if they're coming against the scriptures, we can't God bless that. We got to say, bro, you're coming against the scriptures. You're, you're leaving the doctrine of Christ. Test everything by the word of God. What I'm preaching is not my opinions. It's the word of God that God has been so gracious to allow me to have in my heart when he was refining me the last time where he refined me by fire, making me let go of everything, everything I was touching. And I just stayed in my room reading the Bible and, and he just gave me the fire of God. J, uh, J Jeremiah said, your word, it burns in my bones like a fire and I cannot contain it. Cheers, Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Thank you. Yeah, the word of God, it must be in you. The word of God, it must, you must be quickened by the word when it's preached. You must be able to hear it, have ears to hear, the Bible says. Because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And how will they hear without a preacher, it says in Romans 10. And how will they have a preacher unless one be sent? So we are sent ones to preach to you. That you would fulfill the call in your life. That you would hear and heed the word of God. And it says that. If a man confess that Jesus with his mouth, that Jesus is Lord, and believe in his heart that God raised him from the dead, ye shall be saved. From the heart one believes unto righteousness. So your belief has to be unto righteousness. It can't be the belief of a demon, the Bible says. And James he says, you do well to know there is one God. Oh, foolish man, do you not know that faith without works is dead? You show me faith and I will show you my works, he's saying. And so your, your faith better have a transformed life. There better be some works, some love for the whole world. Love for the beaten up and the downtrodden. Love for the word of God. Fulfilling the call in your life will be a work of faith. And the works of faith do not save you, but they prove that you have faith of faith that, that will last. That won't be cast aside. That you will be of God. Praise the Lord. And Jesus, he gave the warnings of the last days, and then the apostles did too. And in 2 Peter 2, he warned that just like there were false prophets in the Old Testament is what he's referring to. There will be false teachers among you, bringing in destructive heresies, denying even the Lord Jesus that bought them. And, and what that's showing you, it's not once saved, always saved. If you just see with eyes to see, denying the Lord that bought them false teachers okay they come in they bring in destructive heresies they lead people away from the word of god and you can see that there's sin involved too besides the destructive teaching because he says that these false teachers put god to open shame all the false prophesying we're seeing rise up in these last days and for a long time the mormons had many false prophets jehovah's witness many false prophets seventh day adventists false prophesying so that's how we test okay they had this right and that right but this is wrong this is wrong this, these people say there is no hell yet jesus preached and warned about hell 42 times these people say that jesus is not the son of god but this says that you're antichrist if you say jesus isn't the son of god these people say jesus is a created being but the bible says that through him all things were created in the beginning was the word and the word was with god so we go to the scriptures to say that's false that spirit is not of Christ. And in 2 Peter 2, you go on to see that false teachers use feigned words to make merchandise out of God's people. How much do we see that with a lot of the mega churches saying, sow a seed to get rich into my ministry so I can fly a, a $50 million plane while you sow in your money and that God will bless you for doing that. And they, they get rich while, while the people are, are fleeced are fleeced and they use the scriptures to manipulate
The abortion signs will always bring out the demons. The people that like to kill babies, they hate the abortion signs. Psalm 106, 37 says that child sacrifice is a blood sacrifice to demons. Hey, you can have a new mouth, a new heart. Hey, sir, come talk to me, sir. Sir, Jeremy, come talk to me, sir. Jesus wants to save you and give you a new heart, sir. Jesus died for you that you would be born again with a new heart and not use filthy language in front of kids, no less, my friend. Jeremy, or whatever your name is, using F-bombs in front of kids is at your age is showing that there's something wrong with your heart, friend. Jeremy, there's kids here. Control your mouth, Jeremy. There's kids here. You don't want to speak the F-bomb in front of kids, my friend. Jesus can give you a new heart. Jesus can give you a new heart, my friend. He died for you. That you would have a heart of, a heart of flesh from God. That you would train your kids up in righteousness. Yeah, people who promote abortion, they hate the anti-abortion signs. It brings out the demons. The Bible says it's a blood sacrifice to demons in Psalm 106, 37. Everybody can be saved, but they've got to believe the gospel and turn from their wickedness and turn in faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will give you a new heart and he will give you new words. You will want to, you will want to abide in him. He will give you the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is greater than all the drugs that people, that the psychologist put you on. The joy of the Lord is better than anything in this world. You must have the joy of the Lord in you and you will be able to, you won't be offended. I, I try not to get offended at all. Once in a while I get offended when I'm driving. So I know, okay, I gotta, I gotta crush my... Okay, psychiatrist. Do the psychologists not prescribe drugs? Do we have a drug problem? Friend, are you a psychologist or one of those? Let's talk. There's a huge, huge overdose problem in these last days. Suicide is up greater than it's ever been. Drug overdose is greater than it's ever been. 200 people a day died of drug overdose in the United States, drugged out United States, where drugs are marketed in every form and fashion by psychologists, psychologists, psychs. But Jesus will give you a new heart. He'll give you power to walk in newness of life. The Bible said all who are in Christ are new creations. You're going to be a new creation. You're going to be delivered from suicidal thoughts and drugs. Your hunger for the old will be gone. You'll hunger for God. He'll give you his spirit and he'll take care of you. He's a good father. And you will watch the words that come out of your heart, uh, a mouth because whatever's in your heart comes out. So that's why Jesus said, deny yourself every day. Paul said he beat his flesh every day. He's not talking about I beat it up. He's saying I guarded it. I made sure that after I was done preaching that I guarded my flesh that lest I become disqualified. Another scripture that tells you it's not once saved, always saved, if Paul could have been disqualified. So Jesus gave lots of warnings, my friends. And that's what we come out to do is tell you we're in last days. And Jesus warned in 2 Peter 2, he's telling you that they forsook the right way, the false teachers. And they forsook the right way. Another way that's showing you they were once trying to go the right way, these false teachers. They forsook the right way and they went the way of Balaam, known as the madness of the prophet. In the Old Testament, we see that he was a prophet speaking for God. God used him to bless Israel. God never let him curse Israel, but he wanted the worldly stuff. He got tempted by the delegation of the Moabite king who sent very, very uh, rich people who had a lot of influence and he kept tempting him with the riches of this world and he became double-minded. And that's what we get a warning of in 2 Peter 2, that many start off right, but they go the way of Balaam to get on TV. They say, I've heard from the Lord, and it's a false prophesy just to get on TV about Trump and many other things, about this COVID stuff. A lot of these false prophets just drag God's name down, and they're going the way of Balaam. They love the esteem and riches of men. They get rich while, while, while the, the church gets abused. And that's what it says in 2 Peter 2. 
And it says, these false teachers, they promised them liberty, but they themselves are slaves of con con uh, corruption. They're slaves of sin, it says. They, they have eyes that can't cease from sin. Their eyes are full of adultery, it says. So this is what the false teachers look like. And it says, those who have escaped the corruption of the world must escape these. You got to escape the false teachers is what it's saying right there. And then another verse at the end, it says that it would be better for you not to know the way of righteousness, the Lord Jesus, than after knowing, like the true proverb says, the dog returns to his vomit or the pig returned to the mud, dancing around in the mud. Keep going back to your falsehood. Keep going back to the drugs, the alcohol. And the falsehood, the spirit that's contaminating you, if it'd be better for you not to know the way of righteousness showing you. Not only is it not once saved, always saved, but it's worse for those of us who know the truth. If we go back to the world, that's the gospel that you must hear and heed. Praise our God. Jude, he tells you that men or believers, you must contend for the faith. Why? Because certain men have crept in unaware taking the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and turning it into lasciviousness. That's another picture of sin, saying, oh, I've got grace. I can keep going back to my sin. But the Bible says, do not do that. We're storing up treasure, whether it's in heaven or wrath to come. We don't want to deceive ourselves, the Bible says. Then that can happen. 2 Timothy 3 tells you that perilous times are going to come, that men are going to be lovers of self. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all of this, desiring the praise of men, lovers of self, proud, boasters, arrogant, despisers of those who are good, heady, high-minded. Uh, we pray that you would believe the gospel, my friend. The Bible says, lift up your voice like a trumpet. We pray you believe the gospel. God loves you. May the word go forth into your heart and you believe. So 2 Timothy, and then it goes into Jude at the very very end, he also warns about the way of Balaam, and he warns about false teachers who take the grace of God and turn it into a license to sin. And it says, twice dead, pulled up at the roots. In Ephesians 2, we were all once dead in our trespasses and sins, but we became alive and enlightened by the word of God when we were born again of the incorruptible seed of Jesus Christ. So twice dead is showing you somebody that was following, they were once dead dead and now they're twice dead it's not good my friends God, let, let the word be true of God be holy as he is holy the Bible says without holiness no man shall see God the Bible says so we got to be holy as he is holy and believe on the scriptures believe on the son of God and then Jesus clears up any false teaching in the book of Revelation first let me finish 2nd Timothy 3 that the perilous times will come and before that, 1 Timothy 4, Paul says by the Holy Spirit expressly states that in the latter times, the last days, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, having their conscience seared as with a hot iron, speaking lies and hypocrisy. Remember how Jesus said, by your fruits, you will know them? Well, in this instance, their fruit is they've departed from the faith. And they're deceived by deceiving spirits. And it becomes a doctrine of devils. They're more talking about the devil than they are Jesus Christ. They're deceived. And then it says they speak uh, lies in hypocrisy. So if somebody continues to lie over and over, false prophesying, telling you they're going to do something and not doing it over and over, that's speaking lies in hypocrisy. Eventually, their conscience can be seared as with a hot iron. And then God can give them over to that state. And that's what it says in 2 Timothy, that you can be deceived and deceiving others. So fear God and keep his commandments. Let the word of God uh, refine you through the refining fire. Don't resist the purging of the Lord. It says evil impostors will wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Just like Janice and Jambres, their deeds will be made manifest. So the deeds of the world are being made manifest. The deeds of the churches are being made manifest. And in 2 Timothy 4, Paul says to preach the word, Timothy, because Jesus is coming to judge the quick and the dead. 
and to preach the word. Be instant. Be ready in season and out of season. The word is good for rebuke, reproof, correction, and training of righteousness, that the man of God may be complete with long suffering and patience. That's what the word of God does. That's how we're supposed to admonish each other in the word of God, making disciples of all nations. Jesus said in Galatians, it talks about restoring somebody in sin. Do it in meekness. Let ye sin also. We got to guard ourselves that when we're trying to come correct, that we don't go into sin also. Praise God. Everything gets cleared up in Revelation. Anybody who's reading Revelation can, with eyes to see can see what is true and what is false in the churches. Because Jesus, he shows us how he's judging the churches in Revelation 2 and 3. And he has eyes that are a flame of fire as a resurrected Jesus. And his hair is white as wool and his feet as burnished bronze as if it's been burned in the fire. And he's got the voice of many waters and the double-edged sword in his mouth, which is the word of God, which he's coming back to smite the nations. The Bible says he's coming back to make war. He's coming back to judge. And those who aren't ready are going to be hiding under the rocks and caves of the mountain saying, fall on us, hide us from him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb who can stand. Revelation chapter 6. That time has not quite come, but it's on its way here. And Jesus judges the churches and he says, I know your works. So are we saved by works? No. But must we have works? Yes. I know your works to the church of Ephesus, that you labored for my name's sake. That's what you're supposed to do. Labor for the name of Jesus. That you can't bear those who are evil. So what that's saying is you're not supposed to stand with evil. You're supposed to be like, that's evil. I cannot, I cannot bear the cussing, the cursing, the drunkenness, the evil speaking. That's, that's, that's scripture. You can't bear those who are evil. You tested those who claimed their apostles and found them to be liars. If you hear me rebuking some of the false church, he's telling you that that's what you're supposed to do by the word of God. And he says to this church, but this I have against you, that you forgot your first love. Remember where thou art fallen and repent and do the first work. Lest I come, I will move thy candlestick which is the light of Christ to this group of people. Maybe their hearts grew hard. They were good on doctrine. They couldn't bear those who were evil. And we don't know the exact thing Jesus said, but it's supposed to, you're supposed to know, I'm supposed to know, that if we've forgotten our first love, that we've got to go back to that. And that's what he says there. It's a rebuke even of the church that had the doctrine right. That was rebuking the falsehood in the church even. That's exactly what it's saying. And they still had to repent. So that means let's fear God. And know his judgments are, are, are a consuming fire. It says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Our God is a consuming fire. It says in Hebrews. Praise our God. So the first church. They're being judged by their works. The second church, Smyrna. This church is persecuted, my friends. They think they're poor, but Jesus says you're rich. So isn't this a contradiction to what a lot of these preachers are preaching? If you're blessed, you're rich. But Jesus says to the poor church that thinks they're poor, they're persecuted. They're possibly on the run. They're possibly at enmity with their own family because they're the only believers. And Jesus says, this church is rich. And then Jesus says, behold, the devil's going to cast some of you into prison 10 days. Be faithful unto the death. Let no man take your crown. To he who overcomes, you will not taste the second death. That's the judgment, the lake of fire in Revelation. I believe it's 21. Where there's a second death. And those who are not written in the Lamb's book of life are going to rise and get judged and get thrown into the lake of fire. Praise God. The next church 
of Pergamos. Jesus says the very seed of Satan is there and the doctrine of Balaam, where we've already shown you, you can start right and sell out to the world for the love of money, become double-minded. We've seen that in these last days. But then Jesus points to his faithful martyr Antipas. The word martyr means witness. He died for the name of Jesus in the midst of the false teaching of Balaam and the seed of Satan in this church showing you in each example there's a true church and a false church at enmity both claiming to be the church that's why you got to read the scriptures you got to read the scriptures understand the judgments take your time don't rush to too many judgments let let God show you as you grow Revelation chapter 3 to the fourth church of Thyatira. These guys had so many works and your last or better than the first, your charity. So they were charitable. They were probably feeding the homeless. We've got churches in these last days who are pro-Sodomites and pro-Pope, one world religion. And they're out there doing a lot of charity. Praise them. Praise, Praise them in truth, friend. You follow them in truth? Praise God. And so this looks like that could be that kind of church, but they, but they have the doctrine of Jezebel who teaches and leads kids into sexual sin. And she calls herself a prophetess and she's teaching in a position she's not supposed to. The Bible says in 2 Timothy, no, 1 Timothy 2, let a woman not teach over a man, let her remain silent in the church and learn from her husband. There is an order to the church. And when we get out of order, things go wrong. The women become more manly and preach more boldly than men. And, the God, and God's word never returns void. But in this situation, Jesus says that this woman Jezebel speaks for Satan. Pro-abortion is speaking for Satan. Pro-sodomy is speaking for Satan. Pro-drunkenness is speaking for Satan. Pro-anything that doesn't inherit the kingdom of God is saying, this is good. And what God said is not true. And so Jezebel, to any who has this doctrine with her, Jesus is going to judge this church and he's going to cast her children into a sickbed. And all the churches will know that he is searching the reins, the thoughts and the hearts. So all the churches are supposed to see this when it happens. It's a judgment. And it says that creation longs to see who are the true sons of God. Creation longs to see who are going to be the true sons of God. Praise God. And then it says to as many as have not this doctrine, I put on you no other burden to those who overcome. I will grant to rule over the nations, even as I overcame and broke everything to shivers and I will give them the morning star. There's coming a time where the, where the saints are going to rule and judge this world. It says that, don't you know the saints are going to judge the angels in first Corinthians, the spiritual man judges all things spiritual with spiritual because we have the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2, 15, somewhere right there. So we're supposed to judge righteous judgment. Jesus said, do not judge by outside appearance. Judge righteous judgment. Matthew 7, 24. I, no, Matthew, somewhere. Forgive me, I can't remember. But that's what he said, somewhere. The next church in Revelation chapter 3, to the church of Sardis, you think you're alive. He's judging the churches, my friend. And this church thinks they're alive, but thou art dead. There's only a few walking in white. Strengthen the things that remain. For I have not found your works perfect before my God. The Greek word for perfect means complete. They weren't complete. There was only a few walking in white. What is walking in white? Well, the Bible tells us that those who come back with Jesus are on white horses, clothed in white. And it says that these are the righteous acts of the saints. Praise God. Praise God. So not many in this church were, were walking in white. Many were dead. And Jesus says, remember what thou hast heard and hold fast. Strengthen the things that remain. To those who overcome, I will not blot out their name out of the book of life, but I will speak to the Father about them. So another verse that denies once saved, always saved, that warns you can have your name blotted out of the book of life. In Revelation 22, 18 through 20, right around there, it says, do not add to the prophecy of this book. 
lest ye get the plagues. Do not subtract, take away from it, lest ye have your name pulled out of the book of life. You don't want to take away from the word of God. That's what the Pharisees did. They added to the word traditions of men and they took away the power of God. They took away the power of God by bringing in their own stuff. So we let God's word be the fire that burns amongst us, that it would burn away the chaff. Praise God. And then the next church of Philadelphia, it's Jesus is represented by he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key that opens and no man shuts and he has the he can shut the door that no man can open. And he says, I know your works that you've labored, kept the patience, not denied his name and have a little strength. Behold, I will take those who say they're Jews, but are the synagogue of Satan. And I will cast them before your feet so that they will know, that all will know that I have loved thee. It's another picture of judgment, my friends, where there's the true and the false being made manifest. And many people think that there is no plan for Israel in the last days. They think they're the only Jews. But God has a plan for the, for the uh, people of Israel also in Zechariah 12 through 14. Read Romans 11. Do not get haughty lest ye get cut off. Over the Jews. Do not get haughty. This is not a Jesuit teaching. This is the word of God. God has a plan. He's coming back to Israel. He's coming back to Zion. He's coming back. He's going to set up his thrones right there. Praise our God. And we see the picture. People think they're Jews, but are the synagogue of Satan. In that, in that scripture right there. And we see them cast away. We see them humbled at the judgment. And then Jesus says to this church, I will keep you from the hour that will try the whole world. So there's a, looks like a remnant that's going to be kept just like Israel was kept through the 10 plagues in the Old Testament. The Old Testament is being replayed in the book of Revelation. The judgments, Babylon, God used Babylon to judge the church in Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. And Daniel, Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah were the prophets of God that God had to pull away from the false teachers. Behold, I show you two figs, he said to the prophet Jeremiah. What do you see? One fig is ripe and good, and the other one is rotten. Behold, the good ones I had to get rid of from the false teachers. These are the ones that went into captivity. To he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the Lord. There's a false false church in the Old Testament and in 1 Peter 4 he says don't you know the house of the Lord is judged first and if scarcely a believer be saved where will the sinner and the ungodly appear and so it's the same thing happening in Revelation the churches are being judged first and then comes the wrath of God on the world and God uses Babylon to judge the church that's why we see in Revelation 1823, the merchants were the great men of the earth, and by thy sorceries, Pharmakia, all nations were deceived. Pharmakia is being used in these last days to bring everybody into this beast system. The who is going to be able to control who is a health hazard pretty soon. You saw what happened with the COVID, and you could see how they were trying to make everybody take that thing to buy and sell. This is a shadow. God is so long suffering that he's trying to get people to see and many people can see and they do warn, praise God. And so the next church of Laodicea, keep in mind, those who have a zeal for the Lord, every church is given a chance to repent. Jezebel is the only one who repented not. Every other church can repent from all of these other doctrines if they would just hear the word of the Lord. And come into the truth of God and follow Jesus in truth. Every church can repent. Even Laodicea. He says, I wish you were hot or cold. But because you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. Vomit you out of my mouth. That's what Jesus says to the lukewarm. He says, because you say I'm rich and have need of nothing and have plenty of goods. So the rich church had the big houses. They had, the big, they had all the money and they thought they were fine. They said the name of the Lord. They went and did their worship at this church, just like Sardis was, they thought they were alive, but they were dead. This church thought that they were okay too, but this church became lukewarm and Jesus spits them out. 
and he says that no, you're not. He says you're poor, blind, naked, wretched, and miserable to this church that thought they were rich. A contradiction to the poor church who thought they were poor, but they were rich. And he says, I counsel thee to buy from me gold tried in the fire, that you may be clothed in white, that the shame of your nakedness be not exposed, that you may have eyes out to see. Behold, I chasten those I love. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. I stand at the door and knock. If anybody will open, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit on my throne, even as I overcame and sat on my father's throne. To he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the Lord. My friends, Revelation says it promises you a blessing to those who read the prophecy of this book and those who hear it and keep the things that are written therein. For the time is at hand. It's going to show you what, what judgment looks like. So that's what a good father does. He shows his son to go the right way. Good and well done, my faithful servant. Keep going the right way. And when he goes the wrong way into the street where the drug dealers are going to run him over, where the false teachers are going to swallow him up, the father purges and he says, come back here by the word of God. And that's what Revelation is doing. And we see that the beast system is, is shown to us in Revelation chapter 12. The devil who's been accusing the brethren, he is cast down, who accused the brethren daily. Day and night, he is cast down, and the angel says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. The devil's been cast down to you, knowing that his time is short. And we see in Revelation 9, the key to the bottomless pit is open, and Apollyon and Abaddon and all the demonic locusts are released and loosened. This is the time of the end. It says, Woe to those who think the end is going to be light. The t terrible day of the Lord is not light, it is dark. There's a judgment coming, my friends. Be ready to stand for the word of God. Be holy as he is holy. And then we see in Revelation 12, 11, they overcame the beast by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. They loved not their own lives, even unto the death. They followed the lamb wherever the lamb goes. And we see Revelation chapter 6, the fifth seal. This is how we know that we're not quite all the way to the horses running. Maybe the first horse, I'm not even going to say that. But once it starts happening, it's going to happen pretty quickly. But we know that in Revelation chapter Six, the fifth seal, after the four horses are released, we see how long, O holy and true, how long until you judge and avenge the blood of the martyrs. And they're crying out, and they're right underneath the altar of God, saying this. They're not up there with God yet. They're under the altar of God. And he says, he gives them white robes, and he says this, not until the fellow brethren and the full allotment is fulfilled that are killed. There's literally an amount of saints that are going to be killed until the appointed time, it says right there. Yes, the book, Revelation is a lot of martyrdom. Praise God. Praise His holy name. May you be found faithful to the Lord. May this word quicken your heart. May the backslider be called back into doing the will of the Father and fulfilling the call on his life. May the drunkard be convicted that they're not right with God, the drug user, the drug dealer. May the false teachers be convicted and not be given over to a, a seared conscience. May God have mercy on all of us. May his name be praised day and night. For this is the will of God that we praise his holy name. And we give him glory for all the things he's done for us. He gave us the creation. He gave us his only begotten son who never sinned. He gives us so much long suffering and forbearance. Patient with us. He's so giving. He's so good. It's men that come up with bad things and harm themselves. And we try to stand out here trying to tell you that there's a way that seems right unto a man. But the end thereof is death. So take every thought captive to God. Do not lean on your own understanding. Count on God to be faithful and true. Be a little child and lift him up and watch God move in your life. He is a God of miracles. He's a God of resurrection power. He took me broken in prison and gave me a new heart. He's taken so many other people from that darkness and gave them the spirit of God. And he wants to do that for you. That you would be doing the will of the Father so that you will be found worthy of his kingdom and hear good and well done my faithful servant enter the joy prepared from the foundation
salvation of the world. In, in Revelation, we see that the tree of life is given to those who overcome that Ephesus church. Remember the tree of life in, in, uh, Revel in Genesis chapter 1? But the tree of knowledge of good and evil, a lot of people are eating from that tree of knowledge of good and evil, going down rabbit holes, using drugs to try to find understanding. That is the way that leads to death, my friends. Eat the word of God. Let it abide richly in you. Praise our God. God bless in Jesus' mighty name.